Good morning. I hope that everyone is having a great Senator Day. Today at our school, we have two very special guests, Mr. Joseph Biden, the Vice President of the United States of America, and Mr. Arnie Duncan, the United States Secretary of Education. We welcome everyone to our campus and know that we are all feeling Fletcher's pride. After all, as all of you are aware, our football team is heading to the Final Four tomorrow. Go Senators! <laughs> Fletcher is a school with a rich history and pride in our academics, athletics, and arts program. Since 1937, Fletcher has served as the pride of the beaches for the Duval County Public Schools. Vice President Biden and Secretary Duncan will be speaking today on a topic that is very important to the youth of America, the affordability of a higher education. We can all agree that in order to be competitive in today's global workforce, a college education is key. But as tuition prices continue to increase, it's becoming harder and harder for many of us to afford a higher degree. I'm sure my classmates here at Fletcher would agree that the idea of being $25,000 in debt when we graduate from college in four years is a scary thought. America has always served as a beacon of the light for the, for the world, and its educated citizens are the country's best asset. Making college more affordable is an important part of making sure America continues to be a beacon for all. Thanks to the efforts of the administration, an affordable higher education is within our grasp. Let's take advantage of it. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the United States Secretary of Education, Mr. Arnie Duncan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Please sit down. We don't want you to stand for the next hour. So. <laughs> Please give another round of applause to Ashley. Thank her for her leadership. I could not have done that as a high school senior with a vice president sitting here if you paid me a million dollars. So Ashley, great, great job. And I heard she's doing fantastic academically, looking at some great colleges. Her brother's at Vanderbilt looking there. Uh, my dad went there. It's a great school. But wherever you go, you're going to do real well. So congratulations. Uh, to Principal Gilbert, and can we have this, all the staff here, the teachers, the administrators, please stand. Let's give them a big round of applause for their hard work. To all of our students here, please say thank you to your teachers and your principals. None of them went into education to make a million dollars. They're here. They want to make a difference. Uh, they want to help. And those thank yous go a long, long way. So uh, find those opportunities to let those teachers know how much you appreciate them. We're thrilled to be here. This is a, a fantastic school, a fantastic community, a college-going culture. Uh, Vice President and I, the President, we all think that is critically important. You have to have that aspiration of going to college, the good jobs, building upon the success of your families, having a chance to experience a different world, that's so hugely important. And we have to make sure that middle class dream, that quintessential American dream, remains possible. And when you survey, when you ask the American public today, what do you think about going to college? Everybody wants to go, but a lot of people feel they can't afford it anymore. Now it's somehow a rich person's dream. And that simply can't continue to exist. So we're trying to do everything we can to make sure college is accessible, is affordable, that you're able to take that next step. Vice President will talk about this huge increases in Pell Grants. Did that without going back to taxpayers for nickel. Simply stop subsidizing banks, put $40 billion in the next decade in your hands. Huge increases in the American Opportunity Tax Credits. On the back end, trying to make loans much more affordable so those loan repayment plans don't kill you as you're trying to pay the mortgage or buy a car, pay the light bill or buy the groceries or whatever. So we've done a lot to try and help. And we're going to continue to try and do a lot to help. Not everyone in Congress believes in that. Some people think in Congress education is an expense. We fundamentally think it's an investment. and We have to continue to invest. But quite frankly, we can't do it by ourselves. We have to challenge everyone to be part of the solution. We have to challenge every single governor around the country. We know these are tough economic times. Everyone's struggling. But we're going to educate our way to a better economy. So in tough economic times, that's not the time to stop investing in K-12 education, to stop investing in higher education. We have to continue to invest. Uh, as, as we look at colleges themselves, colleges themselves have to be thoughtful. They have to be part of the solution. And they just can't have tuition continue to skyrocket much, much faster than the rate of inflation. To all of you, smart students, savvy parents, make good choices. You want to get a great education in college? You want to get value for that. Where you see tuition escalating every single year? Think about that twice. Where you see graduation rates that aren't as high as they should be? Think about that twice. We have 6,000 institutions of higher education around this country. 
You have great, great options. We have the best system of higher education in the world. But all of us have to come together. We have to continue to do more. We're all in. States have to step up to the plate. Universities have to be thoughtful now, particularly in tough economic times. And we want you guys to make good choices. Finally, to all of our juniors and seniors here, the goal is not to go to college. The goal is to graduate. And it might take three years. It might take four years. It took me five years to graduate from college. Whatever it might be, get through, get that degree. Four-year universities, two-year community colleges, trade, technical, vocational training, whatever your passion is, take that next step. And we know the jobs of the future. How many jobs are there today if you drop out of high school? How many good jobs out there? Basically none. If you just have a high school diploma, how many good jobs are out there? Almost none as well. So some form of higher education has to be the goal for every single one of you. And if you do that, as a country, we're going to be very, very strong. If we don't educate our way to a better economy, we're going to struggle. The final thing, why this completion goal is so important to me, one generation ago, we led the world in college graduates. We were number one. Anybody know what we are as a nation today? I wish we were six. We're 16th. We're 16th. Is that who we think we are as Americans, 16th? Is that good enough? Not even close. And what's so interesting to me is not that we've dropped. We have about exactly the same graduation rate today as we did a generation ago. But 15 other countries have out-educated us, they've out-invested, and they've passed us by. So we've stagnated, we've flatlined, they've gone further, and then we wonder why we struggle economically. And so I really look to the seniors here and the juniors to lead the country where we need to go. The president has challenged all of us, the vice president has challenged all of us to lead the world in the percent of college graduates by 2020 in a decade. And I'm actually very hopeful for all the challenges, for all the difficulties we have. I'm very optimistic about where we're going. It's because we have great schools like this, great families, great communities, great teachers. You guys are going to help lead the country where we need to go. And I thank you for your commitment to your education today. I thank you for your hard work to prepare yourselves to take the next step in the education journey. And as a country, we're going to be very, very strong because of your hard work and your commitment. It's now my honor to introduce someone who's a good friend, a mentor, someone I just have the highest respect for, the Vice President, uh, Mr. Joe Biden. He and his wife are passionately committed to education. His wife, to this day, continues to teach in a community college, which I think is simply amazing. He is who he is because he got a great education. He's not a man who was born with a silver spoon in his, in his mouth. Great family, strong family. His dad didn't go to college. His mom didn't go to college. He is who he is because he worked hard, because he got a great education. He understands as well as or better than anyone in this country what it takes and that education has to be at the heart of strengthening our nation. Please give a warm round of applause to our Vice President, Mr. Joe Biden. Thank you all very much. Thank you all very much. I come from a family like a lot of you. And I come from a circumstance where I know, uh, I know how hard it is and how much debt is accumulated uh, by our sons and daughters. Going to private universities, my sons and daughters graduated with an incredible amount of debt. My one who went to Yale ended up with $120,000 in debt after seven years. My other one, $89,000. The other one, $65,000. I did everything in my power to borrow money and help them pay. They worked through school. They worked 30 hours a week and still played ball, and they worked in order, but they still couldn't get it there. They still, still couldn't make it. So the President and I are determined to make sure not only <coughs> is college more affordable so that every child who's academically qualified can get to college, we also want to make sure that when you get there and you get out, you're able to pay it off without having an overwhelming burden. It's the, uh, it's the overwhelming interest of the nation, as Secretary Duncan pointed out, for us to have the best educated population in the world. And right now, as he pointed out, we rank 16th in the world. Six, 15 other countries have higher graduation rates than we do. It's simply unacceptable. So here's what the President and I and Secretary Duncan are trying to do to help ameliorate the problem and put us in a position to be able to win the 21st century as a nation, like we did the 20th. First, we're pushing colleges and universities, as the Secretary said, to become more efficient. The cost of college tuition has escalated far beyond the rate of inflation. Some suggest the, ex the, the, the escalation is over 400 percent in the last 20-some years. 
I just know what the tuitions are to the schools my kids went to and the university I went to, a state university. And my grandchildren now are applying. My granddaughter is applying now. And literally, the tuitions are double. They're double. They're double what they were just 16, 15, up to 20 years ago. Right now, there are no real incentives to dissuade colleges and universities from continuing to raise tuition. The president called a bunch of college presidents together yes, uh, two days ago. I think you were there, Arnie, in the, in, in, in the West Wing to say, hey, guys, we got to do something about this. And they were, they, they were receptive. But here's the point. We believe we can cut cost and limit student debt without, without in any way compromising the quality of an education. And so you're going to hear a lot more about this as time goes on. It's not going to be easy. But this, there, there is no excuse for complacency. They need to do their part. And right now, they're not doing enough. The incredible cost of college education is, for the first time, crushing hundreds of thousands of parents and making them wonder. Let me tell you, folks, it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. As a matter of fact, it's absolutely essential. But here's what the things we have to look at the facts. Today's unemployment rate, just to put it in perspective, these are tough economic times, even in this difficult economy. The unemployment rate for anybody with a college degree is half what it is for people without a college degree. Half. If you have a bachelor's degree today, you make almost $20,000 a year more than the average American. If you have an associate's degree from a community college, you make on average eight thousand dollars more a year than everybody else just look at the numbers it's worth it it matters but as you all know and your parents know having a college degree is about a lot more than how much money you make it's about the independence it bestows upon you the significantly broader range of choices it gives you the social accept acceptability that accommodates it it's about your sense of your self-worth. It's about a sense of accomplishment. Folks, it unlocks the mind, and it serves as a tool to increase equality, civility, progress. An educated man, in Plato's terms, an educated woman, is a good citizen. I realize uh, it also helps uh, people realize their dreams more easily. My favorite poet is William Butler Yeats. And he once said, quote, education is not filling a bucket. It's about lighting a fire. Education is not about filling a bucket. It's about lighting a fire. And a college education will spark that fire that gives you a chance to have it burn your entire lifetime. So yeah, college is worth it. It's worth it not just because of the economic incentives. It's simply just worth it. But it's gotten so much harder, gotten so much harder to afford it, not just because of the tuition rises Arnie and I talked about, which have more than tripled since the 90s. By the way, in your state of Florida, the University of Florida and the University of North Florida tuition fees have increased nearly 50 percent in just over the last three years, 50 percent. <laughs> But it's mostly gotten harder because the two ways your parents and their predecessors were able to help their kids to get to college is like I was able to help my kids to get to college. And that was because of the equity in their home and because of their retirement plans, their 401ks. But because of the Bush recession, the recession we inherited, that's gone up in flames. So it's gotten a lot harder a lot harder because those 401ks and that equity is not there for an awful lot of parents. Hopefully, it's not the case for you parents here, but my guess is it is for a whole lot of you. And because of this financial crisis, American families, by the way, they lost, catch this number now, those of you who are going to be economic majors, they lost, American families lost $16 trillion in wealth. $16 trillion evaporated, evaporated. 
it's going to take a while to come back. In the meantime, you beautiful kids, you're getting ready to go to college. A lot of that money, that $16 trillion, used to go to pay college tuition bills. We created, so the question we had when we sat down, when we came into office, Arnie, the president, this is the best sector education the country's ever had. I really mean it. He feels it, he speaks it, he's in his heart. So we sat down and we said, what are we going to do to help? So I want to translate it. We created a new tax credit that gives students and their, their families $10,000 over the next four years. So if, in fact, you're at the end, in, in, when, when you file your income tax on April 15th, your parents do, or when you're out, if you do, if you're doing it on your own, and a lot of kids are going back to college at 20 and 25 and 30 years old, if they're on their own, and let's say you owe the federal government $2,000 in taxes. You get to write it off. You, if it's you up the, for the first $2,500 in your taxes, you don't have to pay. That's $2,500 more a year that can go to help pay tuition, help defray your cost. $10,000 over four years. And by the way, it's already helping. Nine million families, by the way, we also raise what we call Pell Grants. Nine million families in America go to school on Pell Grants, including 700,000 here in the state of Florida. But because of what we did in the Pell Grants, there are a total of three million kids going to college today that weren't going to college two years ago because they had no chance of affording to get there. We think that matters. We also, as was referenced earlier, it used to be you could go and you wanted to get a federal loan to get to college. You had to go through a bank. Banks aren't, they're not bad guys, but they charged a fee. So you went to the bank and said, I want to borrow money under a federal program to get to college. Your parents did, or you did. Well, that cost the taxpayers $60 billion a year. We were paying essentially a fee not essentially a fee to the banks for lending you a federal guaranteed money. So we came along and it was the president's idea and already said, why are we doing that? Why don't we just directly do it and take the middleman out? So I said 40 billion of it went into these Pell Grants. That's a big chunk of change, which as I said, those Pell Grants put 3 million more kids in school, college, who would have never gotten there. Right here in Florida, there's 500,000 kids going to college this year because of Pell Grants. We also took a couple billion dollars of that money, instead of going to the banks, and we gave it to community colleges, which is the best kept secret in America today, community colleges. It's cheaper, and it's a pathway directly not only to a two-year education, but to a four-year education. So because we can get you scholarships, hope scholarships, to get you to a community college, I know you all rather go, if you could, to a four-year college right away. The first two years of college cost you about one-fifth or less what it would cost you to go to the state university or a private university. And all those credits are transferable now in your state and in mine. So you go to a community college. Again, you'd rather go and be on campus and go to a four-year college. But those of you who want a four-year college, Education, because of the money we gave to community colleges, now they're able to accommodate. They have better programs. They have better teachers. They have better initiatives. And now they're offering courses that allow you, once you get finished those tiers, take all those credits and send them right to the state university, and now you're a junior. And you've paid, at the end of the day, I'm guessing here, Arnie, probably somewhere between a third and half as much as you would have paid had you gone all four years. It's a way to get you, those guys, you guys who are qualified, to just can't come up with the money to be able to get a college education. We didn't just focus on college costs, though. We also focused on the part that, 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 that Ashley referenced. You know, the average student, two-thirds of all students go to college have to get a college loan. You know, what happens is you, if you go to a, a university like I did, a state university, 
the average student graduating has $25,000 bill. He gets a diploma and a bill for 25 grand. But if you go to a private university, it's closer to an average of $60,000 you graduate in debt. That's twice as much as your first starting job will likely be. So we figured, and you know, that, uh, you know, it's, it's just hard to, by the way, to put this in perspective, you know how you kids all re read about how, you know, over the last years, credit card debt has accumulated and people have all this credit card debt? Well, guess what? The total amount of student loans that are owed are almost one trillion dollars. Students who've graduated, done the deal, played by the rules, collectively in America owe one trillion dollars in student debt. That's more than all the credit card debt in America combined. Add up all the credit card and the money owed on them, there's more money owed by college students who are out of college now on the debts just to get an education or try to get an education. But it's more than that. The debt takes away your options. Some of you who will go to a private university and graduate 60 grand in debt or 40 grand in debt, you might want to be a school teacher. You want to, might want to be a social worker. You may want to go and volunteer and work for Teach for America or a lot of other programs. You may want to, I'm not saying it's a, you, you have to do that, but a lot of you want to do that. A lot of you might want to go out and start your own you know, uh, um, florist, you know, uh, you want to might open a small business. But guess what? When you got a debt like that, you don't get to. You got to take the highest paying job you can take, no matter whether you like it or not. So it limits. It limits the dreams of students graduating. It limits that debt overhang, the possibilities. No one's saying you shouldn't have to pay the debt. That's not what Arnie and I are saying to the president saying, but we said we should make this more equitable. At least you have a fighting chance to pay back your loans. Two-thirds of all students, as I said, have these loans, and on average debt is 25 for public school, public education. So the president and I and Secretary Duncan they think it should be easier to pay back those loans. Folks, as I said in the beginning, for this generation, your generation, a college education is almost an absolute prerequisite to a ticket to the middle class. It's an absolute prerequ prerequisite if we're going to lead this world again in terms of economic innovation. But to look out at all of you, I have a lot of faith if we give you the chance to get to school. I know, I know one of you out here is going to develop that new technology that makes the cost of solar energy cheaper than fossil fuels, so we don't have to keep burning fossil fuels. One of you is going to provide the breakthrough that isolates a cancer gene that we're close to isolating, so that it can be targeted without killing a person while you're killing the gene. One of you, one, one of you is going to come up with the next, uh, become the next inspirational high school teacher who unlocks in somebody like was unlocked in you. Every one of us can think of one teacher we had in high school or college that made us realize the incredible potential we have. And I don't know how many parents in there, I bet every one of them can name a teacher who taught them how to know and how to believe in themselves. Your generation contains the next Mozart, the next Steve Jobs, the next Barack Obama, the next Nobel laureates, the next humanitarians who are going to change the world. We're going to change the world. And what we've got to do is make sure that that capacity locked inside of you has a chance, has a chance to break out. And the best way to do that is challenge your minds. Challenge your minds. Get you the best education the world can provide in graduate and undergraduate school. Because that's where it's all going to come from. And in order to develop those talents, we can't have them stillborn now. You can't, with an incredible mind some of you have, and you don't even know your potential yet. 
we can't stifle it by never having you exposed to ideas that challenge the way you think, force you, force you to put those minds to work, unlock them. It's a simple proposition for the President and me, and I mean this sincerely. We are absolutely determined. There is no higher priority in our administration. Arnie knows. I know. My wife, Jill, knows. Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, we know an absolute truth. I would not be standing here before you today were it not for the sacrifices made to get me a college education. If I had been like my dad and my mom, and not had the opportunity to get a college education, I would have never, never, never had a chance to stand here. I would have never had a chance to realize that there's nothing, nothing that I should not aspire to. Not a single thing. And I say to all you seniors, there's no one you can name. There's no one you can name or admire who was any better off than you when they sat in your seat as seniors in high school. Nobody. Barack Obama, Steve Jobs, name whoever your hero may be, none of them had anything on you except what they did do is they got a chance, they got a chance to have their minds challenged by the best minds in the country. That's what this is all about. We have faith in you. So, folks, I, uh, I'm happy to be with you. I, uh, I wish I had that feeling you guys wearing those jerseys have about tomorrow. I wish you the best of luck. And all of you who are applying to college or community college or going on from here, don't give up your dream. Don't give up your dream, no matter what happens. 